So after New York, New Delhi, Italy, now we're back to our professor from Istanbul who will uh, give us a presentation that I believe will uh, answer some of the questions that Fabio so delicately asked. Um, so, Professor Haluk Gercek from Transport Engineering Department of Istanbul Technical University. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will be talking about the mobility patterns, uh, particularly with regard to the sustainability issues in Istanbul. Um, some of the data I will use uh, in this presentation uh, have been produced in our study we did for Plan Bleu, France, a year ago, and there will be a general meeting uh, in this month in France about four other cities in the Mediterranean re uh, region uh, for sustainable mobility. So the outline of my presentation will be like this. First of all, I will give you some very brief information about the transportation and mobility data in the city, and we'll talk about some uh, targets and indicators to uh, examine this question, are we going in the right direction in terms of sustainability? And of course, there are a lot of projects and plans for 2023, which is the 100th anniversary of Turkish Republic, and um, there are ambitious projects actually included in these plans. I will be talking about these projects a little bit, and finally I will make some suggestions. Um, if we look at Istanbul as a percentage of Turkey, uh, the number of Istanbul has about 20% of total number of vehicles in Turkey and 26.4% of the cars uh, registered in the city. And Istanbul produces 22% of the GDP of total national GDP and 16.5% of the employment uh, is located here, and the population with about 13 million now uh, accounts for 17 or 18 percent of the total population of Turkey. We can add to this bar, uh, Istanbul produces about 15 percent of CO2 emissions of whole country. Um, Probably you've already realized that uh, there's an incredible traffic congestion problem here in the city. Um, so in the survey carried out by Urban Age people here, Ipsos survey, uh, people uh, uh, considered the traffic con congestion in the city as the number one problem, which, is, uh, which has a terrible impact on the quality of life. Uh, as compared to other cities like London or Sao Paulo, uh, Istanbul has the highest percentage. Um, average travel time uh, has decreased uh, about 20% in the last decade, and we are suffering high traffic congestion at a low level of uh, car ownership. Uh, as uh, mentioned before, the car ownership rate is about 139 cars per 1,000 inhabitants, comparatively really low as compared to other met metropolitan cities in the Western countries. But there is a massive increase in the uh, car ownership. When we estimate that in 2023, there will be um, 4 million cars, right now 1.7 million cars in the city, and about 7 million motor vehicles. So you can imagine how this problem will escalate in the future. Uh, if you look at the fuel consum consumption of road transport in the city, uh, again, you can see the uh, uh, considerable increase between 1990 and 2007. Uh, we are using the most expensive gasoline probably in the world here in Turkey. But despite this fact, 
gas gasoline consumption of motor vehicles in the city has increased about 25% during this period. And in recent three years, you, you can see there is a, a, a considerable switch to diesel fuel because gasoline is really getting more and more expensive. expensive. Um, we have uh, estimated the CO2 emissions uh, on the basis of uh, uh, vehicle kilometer travels in the city. And between 1990 and 2007, uh, CO2 em emissions from road transport increased by about 37%. Uh, 37%. But the most important thing is that there is no official target for COT emissions in the future. Um, so there's a major concern uh, uh, over the environmental issues in, in the city. Uh, again, according to the Urban Age City Survey, 45% of the people think environment and 41% think traffic would improve the quality of life most in the city. People are aware of the environmental impact of the uh, traffic problems. Um, in a master study carried out in my university in transportation department, we estimated how the CO2 emissions in the transport sector in Istanbul would increase or decrease in the future based on the plans uh, approved in the strategic plan of Istanbul for 2023. Uh, if we, when we calculated the CO2 emissions per passenger kilometer, it is about 100 grams right now per passenger kilometer in the city. But we estimate that by building a railway a transit network of about over 300 kilometers, as suggested in the plans, it will drop to 80 grams per passenger kilometer in 2023. But uh, if you look at the total CO2 emissions from the traffic, from the transport, it is estimated to increase by about 168 percent during this period because of the increase of vehicle kilometer travel. Um, there are some improvements about on the road safety in the city. Between 1999 and 2007, uh, per one million population, road accidents and injuries has increased a little bit, about 14 and 9 percent. But fatalities, traffic accidents, fatalities has decreased about 36 percent, which is a good sign. Um, there are some controversial large road projects uh, uh, we're discussing right now. Um, the, the two of them are related to Bosphorus crossings. The one, uh, the, another bridge, there are, as you know, two bridges right now, and the Minister of Transportation uh, plans to build a third bridge. Uh, over the Bosphorus, the picture on the top shows the, it's just an animation between Tarabia and Beikos in the northern part of the city. And a road tunnel under the Bosphorus is also going to be built. Uh, I will mention about the details of the projects but, uh, later. And another road uh, project that has been uh, done massively in the city are the flyovers. Uh, municipality in about five years has built more than 120 flyovers in the city, just like this, and we call spaghetti junctions. Um, but of course, there are some success uh, in the transportation system. First of all, uh, the fare integration by electronic ticket uh, works really well. I mean, you can use the smart card I used on the way here uh, on different public transport system easily, and that makes people move around uh, more quickly. 
uh, with the fair integration. Uh, and there are also improvements, some uh, improvements in rail and sea transport in the city. New lines are open, new ferries uh, are on, in service now. And of course, as mentioned, uh, Metrobus or the BRT system has been extended from 20 kilometer to 40 kilometer. It's going over the first bridge uh, now uh, at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour and carrying 445,000 passengers daily, which is a tremendous amount of uh, passengers. And it works over capacity because the uh, vehicles are running about 30 seconds headway now, right now in the P cars and carried about uh, 19 to 20,000 passengers per hour per direction. Um, if you look at the failures, uh, there is a lack of integration of land use and transportation plans, lack of official targets set for the sustainability indicators, congestion is densely felt by people, lack of transparent and accountable decision-making process. So, Despite all these failures or problems, citizens of Istanbul are more positive about their local governance than any, many other world cities. 12% uh, of the people in the survey said they are very satisfied with the mayor, and 53% said they are satisfied with the mayor. Um, now, at the end of my presentation, I will be looking at very briefly to the future plans. This is the 2023 strategic plan of Istanbul. As you can see, the plan aims at making new sub-centers on the east and west end of the city, uh, the centralized the uh, built-up areas, and to create self-contained polycentric developments so that the travel demands will be uh, reduced, or at least the distance, average distance, will be reduced. And this is the location of the uh, population uh, in the city for future, as you can see, particularly in the west, uh, you can see there will be two million people located there. It's normally, it's an agricultural area right now. And also in the east, there's a Zaha Hadid project, a very ambitious uh, city transformation project, which will be accommodating about 5 million people on the east side of the city. So um, this is the uh, dense, density of the population in 2007 and 2023. As you can see, there are some uh, new developed areas on the west and east of the city, but the central uh, density more or less the same. Uh, this is an important uh, chart that shows the design lines, what we call traffic engineers or transport planners. This shows the uh, amount of trips between the municipal district of the city in 2006 and 2023. You can see there is a huge amount of uh, trip flows between the west side of the city. Um, there will be about 2 million population located there. But the, the problem here, as far as I can see, is that despite the objective of the plan, which aims at uh, creating new sub-centers, which are self-contained, uh, you can see people are still uh, traveling to the old historical city uh, in huge amount of flows. So if this is not a result of the model specification, then there is something wrong with the land integration of the land use plan and the transportation plan. Obviously, this shows us that the average travel distance will not be reduced and there will be still people moving from the outskirts of the uh, city to the old city center. So... Um, as I said at the beginning, there is a population about 30 million now, but it will, if it goes according to the trends, it will be about 18.5 million in 2023. But the environmental capacity of the city is uh, considered as 16 million maximum. Because of northern area, as you can see here, 
are mostly water reservoirs and forestry area that have to be protected for sustainability reason. And this shows the basic rail transit network in the plan. Right now there's about 138 kilometer of rail network and it's aimed at that the base network will be about 310 kilometer by 2023. And 32 of the respondents to the urban age survey said that a heavy subway system is necessary to solve the transportation problem in the city. So this is the Bosphorus Tunnel Project and the Railway Tunnel Project. The Railway Tunnel Project is undergoing right now. It will be open by 2014. There will be a capacity of 75,000 people per hour per direction with this rail connection. Uh, and also the government has tendered, the tendering documents have finished, as another project, road project, almost parallel to the railway project, only for cars. It's going to be a one5 $5 billion project with two story, two lanes in each direction, and it will carry about 80,000 people, 80,000 cars into the heart of the historical heart of the city daily. But in the meantime, there's another plan for the historical part of the city to demotorize the area just for, and to use the area for uh, uh, people. So this project is difficult to understand why they propose such a project just for cars flowing down in the historical part of the city in parallel with the railway project the construction is going on. So I produced a few maps for the accessibility. Uh, you can, right now, within the 45 travel distance, uh, or by car there is about Six, uh, 8.5 million people living to reach the historical center, but by public transport it is 8.1 million. So this shows that um, this shows that the public transport system is still slower than the car traffic, despite all the congestion. But in the future, in 2023. When this rail transit network is completed and the Marmarai project finished, and there will be 11 people living, a uh, million people living in the same area uh, for public transport as compared to 9.8 million people for car travel time. So the accessibility of public transport will increase in the future. So decision making is very controversial. Who puts the projects, who evaluates, who decides, and who puts money? And uh, I will just skip this uh, suggestion uh, because we have to understand that uh, all, despite the plans made locally by the municipality or Istanbul Metropolitan Planning Office and so on here in the city, all major projects are decided by the government in Ankara regardless of the plans. That is the major problem. Um, so I would like to thank you for your patience, and during the discussion, I can, we can elaborate some more questions. Thank you. Uh, Professor Gershik, thank you very much. Uh, 